What's up? Hi. It's June 25th. It, that's a Monday. This is vlog number 65. Forgive me if the airplanes go overhead. That one's southwest. They've increased their flights to our fair city. You could hear more than one in this video. I'm having a lovely Peru. And I'm here in the backyard because it's warm and beautiful and feeling summery. And I need to mow the lawn and I'm putting it off so I thought I'd spend this time with you. Coffee talk, shall we? Anyway, I'm gonna try to make this a brief video. My topic this week is the use of name as pronoun. So when I first started this process, I I told you know people who were struggling, I said, you know, just go ahead and if you're not comfortable, just use my name as my pronoun. You know, so Steen said Steen needed to go to Steen's house to pick up Steen's dog. And I got it. You know, I was like, okay, this this is like a the the gateway drug to proper pronouning. But I think what I didn't realize is that for a lot of people that discomfort would linger. Um, and I find myself in this awkward position. Now the wind is blowing so the wind is going to be going. I find myself in this kind of awkward position where I feel more affirmed in my identity at times among strangers because Strangers use my pronoun, and people who've known me, some of them are still struggling, and it almost feels like the use of name as pronoun is some kind of evasive technique to not have to say the dreaded pronoun and then admit reality. <laughs> Can you tell it's a little loaded for me? It feels a little loaded at times, and, and I get I get it. Like, you know, I was talking with my partner this morning, and she said, you, know, you just gotta give people time. It's uncomfortable, you know, it's hard. And she said, you know, at times she does it, um, if she's speaking to me with her clients who, a lot of them don't know a lot about her and she's very private and it, it's kind of the best thing, really. Just, you know, in general. And some people do know and some people have been great. So <clears throat> she has to take it on a case-by-case -case basis on how the person is, um, Anyway, that's a whole nother story. So I, I just, I have found it kind of strangely ironic that that discomfort that people feel for whatever the reason is, it translates into this awkward interaction. And for somebody like me, the one whose pronoun dare not speak its name, um, it's a non-affirming thing. And when you're having a bad day, uh, when you're having a day maybe a harder day being trans for whatever reason, be it job stuff or whatever, cultural stuff or not feeling like you're changing or, I mean, there's, there can be things. This is a broad and complicated journey. There's a way where that lack of affirmation is just kind of a bummer, you know, and you feel like in your most familiar environment, you're, st you're bumping up against something rather than smoothly sailing through and being seen as you are. So it's ironic, don't you think? Um, yeah, and I'm, like, I'm not, you know, I get it. I get it. I, I, I want to be understanding of people. I just, today was kind of musing on the, kind of the irony once again that some of the more familiar environments can be the less affirming places in our lives. And that strange allure of strangers strange, isn't it? Just because they have nothing invested in who you once were or who you were once perceived to be and they see you as you are now and there's no hologram on top. So anyway, um, that's most of what my video is about this week. Just something I'm thinking about and you know, it's it just has to work itself out. But it is ironic. Um, what else did I have? There was something else I wanted to talk about. I don't know.
don't know. I'm like blank on it. Uh, just being here for summer. It was Pride. Uh, not our Pride was a few weeks ago. And oh yeah, that was it. I also um, I often this time of year I often like to kind of watch the light change going into the evening so I'll just lay on the couch and kind of watch as the light changes and listen to music and oh, it's my thing it's like I really love it I find it really great way to end the day is like kind of watch as the room goes dark and look out the windows and see the sky go dark and I was laying there and I was um, I was feeling really comfortable um, in my body and really really thankful for top surgery and trying to remember in some ways how I felt before and I don't know that I do remember what I remember is a, a, it not being that comfortable not like I had constant discomfort but the comfort I felt and the, the sense of peace that I felt laying there was amazing and I think one of the things that I'm working on is giving those moments more real estate and giving them more space to expand into and like that gratitude let it relax let it undo its belt and <laughs> spill out uh, it's a horrible like Homer Simpson like metaphor for gratitude but in a way yes because like everybody I have you know I have my struggles in this process and um, I I give them attention I try not to linger on what's not working and um, I think body stuff is a really big challenge in that and that's one of the things I've started trying to give give more space what works what feels good what are you thankful for and this more complicated question of how do we embrace the intersection, right? It's an intersection, or in my case, it's an intersection. I don't, I don't plan to have any other surgeries. So this intersection between biological self, gender identity, accepting the things you can and the courage to change, the courage to change the things you can, and then also the things that I can't change or that I won't change or that I just, I don't see as option for me um, for various reasons. And some of that is I do have a certain attachment. Do I have to say, am I going to have to trigger warning now? I might. Here it comes. I'm going to do like arc three, two, one, genitals. You know, I like, I like my junk and I like what it's become and I don't I mean I wouldn't give it up would I set it free possibly but you know I'm poor and I don't I don't really like surgery I really don't I feel like I've had enough of them I've had a few in my life really 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 don't want any more surgery um, so thinking about that, how to do work. Oh, and there's another thing I want to bring up. I'm at nine minutes, but here's what I think. Body positivity, positivity about what we have and, um, you know, what I have and what uh, testosterone has done for that and creating, um, we don't have much by way of creating visual realities and representations for ourselves as transbodied people and that aren't entirely based on cis normative models and yes i would love a dick 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 i have four and um i love them all that said i also love tiny d teeny d d low whatever you want to call it positivity around trans bodies and what was the other thing I was going to tell you see I'm very I'm sleepy 
I don't have it. Ah, I'm just gonna have to go in my next video. I hope I'll put, I should take notes, right? I should probably have notes about what I'm gonna talk to you about. Something about body positivity, it was something about embracing what we have. Um, and, and I feel fortunate that I, that that's how I feel. Like I feel like learning and dedicating myself around self-acceptance um, I feel that that's something I haven't even really tapped into and I feel like that's something I want to work on and I feel like that feels important to me in the long run um, and around you know I think I think there's stuff happy pride by the way there's stuff around queer identity and um, It is around embracing queerness, you know, and, and for me, that's how I feel. I feel that, you know, a friend of mine, I was talking with a friend and he said, you know, talking about identifying as a queer, as a queer male. And I realized that's the blanket term for me. You know, the blanket term for me is I'm a queer male who's trans. And... I uh, lived in San Francisco for years, and queer was very much a thing there. And this was back, I left there in 2000. I moved there and I moved to the Bay Area, roughly 84. And, you know, back then we didn't assimilate. We weren't, there, Ellen hadn't come out, and Budweiser wasn't supporting parades, and Smirnoff wasn't sponsoring, and Subaru wasn't sponsoring parades. and. Um, you know, we, there were those people making the argument that we're exactly like everybody else and that's why we deserve rights, and rightly so. Um, but some of us aren't like everybody else and we still deserve rights. And I, I want to extend that to the body level, which is to say, if I do not have a body that emulates a cis body, or maybe there are aspects of my body that emulate a cis male body, and there are aspects that don't, and ultimately I still see my body as a trans male body. Um, can I give that some room? Can I give that some room to be and let that be a positive and build more representation? Um, you know, I'm not asking for pictures of everybody's junk, but junk matters, you know. It, like understanding, I think that's something that helped me in my transition was to like actually, you know, see some junk pictures and like understand and then get over myself and then like learn to love my junk. So, God, I'm just going all over, right? This has been a crazy three minutes. We've gone off on a tangent, haven't we? I think I'm going to stop for today. I love a cup of coffee in the afternoon. I wish we could all sit, there's this, the place where I work, there's this huge table. I don't know how many chairs fit there, like maybe 12, 14 chairs. It's this cool old slice of a tree that's been dovetailed where the cracks are. I'll, maybe I'll put a picture up sometime. I wish we could all sit down and have a fucking rockin' coffee party there. That's one of my dreams. There will be a fucking rockin' coffee party someday with us. I know there will be. I'm working on my passport. Did I mention that? I'm going to get my passport together. So look out world. And I already have my enhanced driver's license. So if you up in Canada, you're not safe from me. I'm just saying. I can be across the Canadian border in two and a half hours. Okay. I don't know why this went there, but it did. I hope you had a great week. Have a great week. Happy summer. Enjoy yourself and party on.